The ground trembles beneath your feet. The air fills with the metallic tang of fear and the acrid stench of sweat. You grip your gladius tighter. Your knuckles are white beneath your gauntlets. This is it. This is the battle you've been preparing for. As you stare down the advancing horde, a chilling realization hits you. Many of the men standing shoulder to shoulder with you right now may not live to see the sunset. Welcome to the brutally uncertain world of Roman warfare, where survival is a matter of skill, luck, and sheer bloody-minded determination. You can't control the chaos of battle, but you can tilt the odds ever so slightly in your favor. So today, we're exploring the methods soldiers use to stay alive, and who knows, we might also find some practical advice for our own lives. The challenges we face today look different but the core of human struggle remains the same. Let's get to it. First, let's not ignore the obvious. The best way to survive a Roman battle is to avoid being in one altogether. I know what you're thinking. That's not exactly the bravest strategy. But this is, after all, a video on how to survive, not how to be a hero. It's worth noting that many Roman soldiers were volunteers, proud to serve their empire, but depending on the time period and the severity of the situation, you might have found yourself conscripted against your will. So, how do you stay out of the front lines then? One way is using your connections. In Roman society, who you knew was essential for your options in life, and the patronage system was key. If you had a powerful patron, he might pull some strings to keep you out of harm's way. If not, then family connections could be just as useful. Use them shamelessly to secure safer positions or any kind of exemption. Speaking of family, if you were a married man over 30 with young children, you had a better chance of being exempted from service. Not a guarantee, mind you, but definitely worth mentioning to the recruitment officer. If all of this failed, perhaps you could use your skills. The army wasn't only about stabbing and shield bashing. They needed engineers, surveyors, clerks, you name it. If you had a valuable non-combat skill, that could well be your ticket to a safer position. So make sure your centurions and officers knew about it. Better yet, get a letter of recommendation from someone important. This could be a local magistrate, a respected craftsman, or perhaps a retired military officer. A letter praising your skills in mathematics, engineering, or logistics could be your ticket to a cushy job behind the lines. Keep your eyes peeled for understaffed non-combat roles and volunteer. Make yourself indispensable. Help out higher-ranking officers whenever you can. The more valuable you are away from the front lines, the less likely they'll send you into the thick of it. But let's face facts too. Sometimes, despite your best efforts, you'll find yourself headed for the front lines. If that happens, it's time for a mindset shift. Remember, military service wasn't just about survival. It was often a stepping stone to political success and higher social status. Most of Rome's greatest leaders earned their stripes on the battlefield. So while you're looking out for yourself, don't forget your duty to Rome and to your family's honour. So let's say all these strategies fail and you found yourself in the army and headed for battle. Don't panic. Preparation is your new best friend. Let's break down how to get ready for the fight of your life. First up is physical preparation and equipment mastery. In the Roman army, these go hand in hand. You'll be doing daily weapons drills with your gladius and your pilum. Get used to them. They'll be your constant companions. Focus especially on muscle memory. Constant drilling creates instinctive reactions, crucial for surviving the chaos of battle. When your mind is overwhelmed, your body needs to know what to do without thinking. Master the draw and thrust of your gladius. Quick, efficient movements reduce your exposure to enemy attacks. And don't forget your pilum. Practice throwing it effectively. A well-aimed pilum can disable an enemy's shield or break up their formation before they even reach you. And while you're at it, get to know your armour intimately. An ill-fitting helmet can obstruct your vision, or worse, fall off in the heat of battle. Not ideal when you're trying to keep your head attached to your shoulders. Also, maintenance is key. After each training session, clean and oil your weapons and armour regularly, check for damage and repair it promptly. A weak spot in your armour or a crack in your shield could be fatal. But it's not just about swinging swords and throwing spears. You'll also be marching a lot, and not just a leisurely stroll. We're talking very long distances with a full pack. It's gruelling, but there's a method to the madness. This builds your endurance, which is crucial for lasting through long battles. Speaking of endurance, let's talk cardio. 
Battle is extremely draining. Even if you can march a long way, you also need to be able to fight intensely for extended periods. Marching builds endurance stamina, but combat requires a different kind of fitness. So run, wrestle, climb, do whatever it takes to build that explosive stamina. In the heat of battle, it could mean the difference between life and death. Strength and agility exercises are also on the menu. You need to be quick on your feet, but more importantly, you need to be strong enough to hold your ground. Train to resist being pushed backwards or thrown to the ground when the enemy slams into your line. This strength is crucial for maintaining formation. If you can, try to go above and beyond in your training. Your life depends on it after all. The more familiar you are with your equipment, the more it becomes an extension of your body rather than a burden. In reality though, you'll probably be too exhausted from the mandatory training to do much extra. The Roman army isn't known for its light workout routines, and most days you'll be grateful just to stay on your feet. But focus on making every moment of official training count. Now, let's talk about the mental game. Physical preparation is crucial, but mental fortitude is what separates the survivors from the statistics. First, accept the reality of combat and the possibility of death. It's grim, but facing this head-on will help you stay focused when chaos erupts around you. Practice mental exercises to manage fear and stress. Many Roman soldiers turned to stoicism, focusing on what they could control and accepting what they couldn't. Find a mantra that works for you. You'll need something to cling to when chaos erupts. Remember what you're fighting for. Yes, it's for Roman glory, but in the heat of battle, it's your fellow soldiers who matter most. Your contubernium, those seven men you eat, sleep and train with, is your lifeline. Make their survival your mission, and you'll find strength you never knew you had. Seriously cultivate the Roman virtues. Courage, loyalty, and self-control. Those aren't lofty ideals, they're survival tools. Courage pushes you forward, loyalty keeps you fighting for your brothers, and self-control stops you from breaking ranks and running, which is a surefire way to get killed. Remember, all this preparation is never just about personal survival, it's about contributing to victory. In a winning battle, you're far more likely to make it out alive. So, train hard, stay alert, and trust in your preparation. The day has finally arrived. Dawn breaks, and with it comes a flurry of activity. You're up early, if you manage to sleep at all. If you're lucky, there's time for a meal. Eat a little, even if your stomach is churning with nerves. You'll need the energy later. Some soldiers might be joking around, trying to lighten the mood. Others are silent, lost in their own thoughts. Both are normal reactions to the stress you're under. Orders come down the line. It's time to move out. You take your assigned position in the formation. The familiar weight of your scutum on your arm and the gladius at your hip are oddly comforting. The march begins. Thousands of men moving as one, the rhythmic thud of feet and the clank of armour creating a soundtrack of impending battle. Keep in step with your comrades. This is not just about getting to the battlefield. It's about unity, about becoming part of something larger than yourself. And stay alert for last minute orders. Battle plans can change in an instant and missing a crucial instruction could be fatal. As you march, you might feel a strange sensation, a mix of fear, excitement, and something else. It's the weight of history. Countless Roman soldiers have made this march before you. Now it's your turn to add your chapter to that legacy. Finally, you reach the battlefield, but the fighting doesn't start immediately. Now comes one of the most challenging parts of the day, the weight. You can see the barbarians in the distance. They might be shouting, banging their weapons on shields, trying to intimidate you. Don't let it get to you. Focus on your training and on the men beside you. Time seems to slow down. Minutes feel like hours. Your senses heighten. Every sound, every movement catches your attention. You might find yourself running through drills in your head or muttering a prayer under your breath. Watch for initial enemy movements. Are they repositioning? This is probably the only time you'll get to view the battle from a strategic point of view. Once the fighting starts, your world will shrink to the few feet around you. Listen for battle signals. A horn blast or a flag movement could be the sign that kicks everything into motion. Miss it and you could find yourself out of position when the clash begins. Remember your training. Remember what you're fighting for. The waiting is almost over. Soon, very soon, you'll be putting everything you've learned to the test in the crucible of combat. Suddenly, the moment of truth arrives. If you're in the front line, ready your pilum. 
This is not a solo act. You'll throw on command to maximize impact. Aim for the enemy's shields. Your goal is to disable them or create gaps in their formation. As soon as your pilum leaves your hand, reach for your gladius. You may only have seconds before the enemy is upon you. Now brace for incoming missiles. Raise your scutum, angling it to deflect enemy javelins. Stand close to your comrades to minimize exposed areas. And remember, your shield doesn't just protect you, it's part of a greater defense. The enemy closes in. Prepare yourself for the intense physical shock of shield-to-shield -shield contact. Plant your feet firmly. Being pushed back is dangerous, falling is fatal. From this point on, your focus is on the few feet around you and nothing else. Don't get distracted by the wider chaos of battle. Focus on your immediate front. Work in unison with your comrades. Stay shoulder to shoulder. Move as a unit, not as an individual. Your line's integrity is your best defense and offense. The sensory overload will be overwhelming, deafening noise, horrific sights. Focus on your tasks to avoid paralysis. Your training will guide you when your mind reels. If you're in the second or third line, stay alert. Be ready to move forward, potentially stepping over fallen javelins or bodies. Your time will come soon. As the battle rages, stick rigidly to your training and formation. Use your scutum defensively and strike with your gladius when an opening presents itself. Concentrate on immediate threats and nearby comrades. Resist the urge to assess the wider battle situation. That's your officer's job. You'll likely experience rapid emotional shifts, terror, elation, rage, tunnel vision, and even joy. Don't let them control you. Now, the rotation system kicks in. If you're in the front line, fight intensely, but pace yourself. You'll have up to 15 minutes of combat before rotating to the rear. Use your rear time to catch your breath and reset mentally, but stay vigilant. You'll be moving forward again soon. Maintain formation integrity during rotations. These can be vulnerable moments. Move quickly and keep unit cohesion. Expect multiple rotations during prolonged fights. Frontline combat is most dangerous, but it's also where you can actively defend yourself. Rear positions offer a brief respite, but beware of missile weapons. Look for chances to distinguish yourself, if possible, but never break formation to do so. Remember, you're part of a larger strategy. Your individual actions matter, but being an effective part of your unit matters more. Stick to your training, support your comrades and follow orders. Despite you and your comrades' best efforts, battles don't always go as planned. So let's talk about what to do if things start to turn against you. First and foremost, recognize the critical importance of avoiding a route no matter what. This is when a retreat turns into a chaotic flee-for-your-life scenario. It's in these moments of panic that the highest casualties occur. The enemy will ruthlessly cut down fleeing soldiers, so maintaining order is literally a matter of life and death. You'll feel conflicting instincts, the urge to run versus your sense of duty, but maintaining cohesion is crucial. Stand your ground unless ordered otherwise. Encourage your comrades to do the same. A united front, even in a losing battle, is far safer than scattered individuals. If a retreat is ordered, it's vital to withdraw in formation. This isn't a mad dash for safety, it's a tactical move. Protect the rear of your formation by holding off the enemy while you withdraw. But what if the worst happens and your line does break? Act quickly. Seek out the nearest organised group and join them immediately. A small cohesive unit has a much better chance of survival than a fleeing one no matter its size. Stay focused. Stay with your comrades and you maximize your chances of living to fight another day. In the heat of the moment, it's easy to think all is lost. But remember, Romans have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat many times before. Your resilience, your training, and your unity with your fellow soldiers are your best tools for survival, even when things look grim. Finally, the clash of arms has ceased and you were neither killed nor captured. Phew, but your ordeal isn't over. Your priority is now recovery. First and foremost, check yourself for injuries. In the heat of battle, adrenaline can mask serious wounds. Inspect your body thoroughly. Even small cuts can lead to deadly infections if left untreated. If you're wounded, seek treatment immediately. The quicker you address injuries, the better your chances of full recovery. Once you've tended to yourself, help your comrades. This isn't just about camaraderie. It's about preserving the strength of your unit. A soldier saved today is one more shield beside you in the next battle. And that, brave legionary, brings us to the core of what you need to remember. 
you are a cog in the machine with virtually zero strategic impact until you get promoted. Accept this. Embrace it. It's your key to survival. The very best you can do is focus on two critical things. One, fight the men directly in front of you. Your world is those few feet of battlefield. Master that space. Two, do your utmost to ensure victory because winning dramatically increases your chances of survival. A victorious army suffers far fewer casualties than a defeated one. And remember this above all else. Don't try to be a hero and don't try to be a strategist. Your job is to be the most effective, disciplined part of the Roman war machine you can be. Stick to your training, support your comrades and never turn around and run. That's how you live to fight another day. And if you want to support our continued march through history, consider joining our Patreon Legion. Your denarii help us forge more historical content, and it's a lot safer than Roman military service. Join us, and let's conquer the past together. Thank you for watching.